Hey, this is Mike and you're watching Real Black TV. And today we have the honor and privilege of being with Ice Cube and Dion Cole, stars of the new movie Barbershop, The Next Cut. This is the town I love, a neighborhood of family and friends. You know how we do Southside Chicago, baby. Yes, baby. And right here at the heart of it all is where everyone comes together, the barbershop. What's up, homie black folks? Uh, 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 uh. Who wants some gangster grub? That who's hopping on fleek last time. Did she just say fleek? There's a whole dictionary full of words. There's a library down the street. You won't see fleek in there nowhere. <laughs> he funny. He make me laugh. What happened in the barbershop, Calvin? We used to come here to get away from women. Me and Angie, we was both struggling to keep our shops afloat. So we had to work together. Saved us both. I can't believe y'all put all that money on your heads and then don't be having the money for your rent. With this hair and this booty. Damn. It's like walking around with a black Amex. And I never get denied. Why y'all always got to take it there? Welcome back to Philly. Thank you. Of course. So I got as ice cubes in the building. How was your day? It was a good day. Okay. It was a good day. I had to ask that. But... Yeah, man, it was. It was. Really. No, it definitely was a good day. Barbershop, next cut. Definitely yes. a good movie. Mm -hmm. um, so, Boys in the Hood is 1991, right? So I can yeah, 1991. 25 yeah. years in show business. Mm -hmm. Countless meetings with executives. Yeah. Has anybody ever had you try and go for the okie doke? <laughs> yeah, definitely. You Ooh. know, uh, they'll try it. You know, I think, you know, you got to deal with the right kind of filmmakers. You know, some filmmakers are all about propaganda mm -hmm. and projecting a certain image, you know, that we may not love and may not like. So you got to look for those pitfalls, you know. Well, Whenever they pull a dress out. <laughs> did writing. somebody try and get you on a dress? No. Okay. They <laughs> better not. <laughs> How about you, Dion? Any, any, any Hollywood stories, things that... They asked you to do that it was beyond your limits. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've just been told no a lot. Like, I've always been told no, no, no. And <clears throat> the one time I got with Conan, it was like some of people heard that I was writing for <laughs> it just turned overnight. Like, yes, 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 yes. But it was weird. I, it was people I just had meetings with, like <laughs> two days before, that wanted to have a meeting with me, like the next day after that. So that's crazy, because yeah, like crazy. your first screen credit is Barbershop One. Yeah. Wow. So you guys go way back. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like Jackie Robinson, man. It takes one guy to believe in you. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm saying, it. and then the floodgates, and then everybody believe in you. It just take that one guy, take that one studio. You know, it takes MGM to do a movie like like mm -hmm. Barbershop for people to to believe that this kind of setting with all these black stars could uh, make a lot of money. It seems like people aren't aware. Like, I mean, Bar Bar uh, Straight Outta Compton, $161 million, black is huge hit for ABC. But then there's still this talk that black films don't make money, white people won't go see them. Yeah, you know, it's that old, you know, the old guard in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's the old gatekeepers mm -hmm. who, you know, Hopefully they're dying out, <laughs> but we can convince them that, you know, black and Hispanics, you know, are movie going audiences and you have to cater to them. You can't just shove the superhero movies down their throat or the movies about, you know, the white comedies. You have to give them them. You mm -hmm. have to show that you understand the demographic that's coming to see the movies. And, you know, uh, it's cool that a couple of, of uh, studios are starting to figure that out. Right. Well, you know, Cube Vision's been at it forever with, with the vision. Like, loaded question. Yeah. Are you a black filmmaker or a filmmaker who happens to be black? <laughs> I'm a black filmmaker who makes films that happen to be black. Okay. I like that. I like the social relevance of this, like bringing it back 10 years later and then addressing the Chirac issue. Um, I mean, was there pressure to like go for a, a tamer approach or? I mean, I didn't know nothing about Chirac when we shot this. Okay. You know, I ended up, once we finished the movie, I saw a Spike movie come on. I was like, damn. And I called Malcolm. I was like, ain't that your cousin? <laughs> Didn't you know yeah. he had a, sh a, sh uh, a Chicago yeah. movie coming out? It's like, man, I didn't know. I was working on my own stuff. But, so, but address it relative. Uh, it, okay. You know, it's two different approaches to me of the same issues. You know what? What I think Chicago should really 
take from this is that we care. We paying attention. We in LA, we got the same issues in South Central LA. Mm -hmm. But we understand that for Chicago it's something new, it's something different, it's a different phenomenon going on that has to be stopped and has to be addressed. So, you know, whether Chirac is your cup of tea or barbershop's your cup of tea, it's still showing that, you know, prominent filmmakers care about what's going on to the people on the south side and west side of Chicago and the north side and wherever side you're from. Oh, definitely. And I like, I like the, me well, not to say message, but the line in the movie where you say, you know, we've got to solve these problems, we've got to deal with them ourselves. You know. We do. You know, our generation got to step up. You know, my generation, 40s year olds and all that, got to step up. You know, you can't be a, a, r a rapper forever. You can't be a hip hop head forever. You mm -hmm. got to grow up at some point and, and talk to our youth. And try to connect and make a and make a, a a relationship with with the young people that have to hold up our our world. Definitely. So, Dion, last last final thoughts. So, uh, you're sitting in the barbershop. Your character. What what are you thinking about this whole Trump situation? Oh, if I was in the barbershop, he would probably be like, uh, uh, I don't see nothing wrong with that guy. Because he believes in himself. And then he'll say, you all need to believe in yourselves the way he believes in himself. So he'll always have a twisted, twisted approach, but, but he means good. You know? America <laughs> promotes you to be Donald Trump. Yeah. America promotes that this is the way you want to be. You want to be rich. You want to be powerful. You don't want to give a damn about nobody else. Mm -hmm. You want to do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a capitalist. Mm -hmm. So he's most people's dream of a of a life and a, of a situation, and it's a shame because life is m way more than all of that. Support black-owned businesses. Go see Barbershop: The Next Cut in theaters, not on bootleg. <laughs> April Please, <laughs> man, spare us. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need anything? Y'all straight? We gotta take our streets back. We put our minds together, we gonna get some solutions. I got so much love for everybody in this neighborhood. Turn that up! Yeah, this gotta be some of my best work. I bet you he won't be talking back to his mama no more. <laughs> Give me George Jefferson. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs>